It's my pleasure to introduce our last speaker today. It's uh, Shin Wenzhu from Caltech, who will talk about correspondences of Shimura, of Shimura varieties via the geometric attack. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, so, I should say, <coughs> mathematically, I'm in fact a uh, great son of uh, Joseph Bernstein. So, it's uh, like uh, the next generation. So, although unfortunately, I haven't. Uh, have a lot of opportunity to interact with Joseph personally, but uh, you know, from very beginning, my mathematical life, I just uh, very the mathematics is very much influenced by Joseph. Yeah, so when I first uh, geometric representation theory, the first thing we learn is like something like category O or like uh, Benison version and localization theory. So it's like, you know, I think. For me, and I guess maybe many young generation, Joseph is like a, one of the gods. <laughs> so, yeah, so I like it's really a great honor to be able to speak in the conference. So, okay, so uh, the motivation, let me, ah, yeah, maybe let me just, this is a, uh, first, this is a joint work. Okay, so I will first uh, mention a little bit about the motivation of this uh, work. It's, uh, uh, there are basically two motivations. The first one is the uh, uh, number theoretic origin. So suppose I have given the modular curve. Uh, this is, uh, then you can take its, uh, uh, some of its more P fiber. Uh, then you talk about, then there's something called the, you can talk about the so-called the super singular points of the, of the modular curve, which one can identify it with, uh, I think this was already, was observed very early by the, the ring. Or <coughs> I'm, I'm not terribly clear about the history, but this is sort of well known. You take uh, a uh, quaternion algebra, which is ramified at the infinity and the p, to be larger. larger. Okay, so this set of points can be identified uh, with uh, this double coset, where k is so, um, some open compact subgroup of uh, it, so that uh, uh, depend on the n. Okay, so right. Here, the n. So uh, this observation, in fact, was used uh, uh, by. Uh, I guess uh, uh, Sear Ribbit to construct congruence between modular forms. So it's nice you have like uh, uh, this. In fact, you can really think about this as uh, another. Okay, modular curve is like one of the simple example of Shimura varieties, and you can think this is another Shimura variety. In fact, a Shimura set. And then, so you can really think about this as a map between a Shimura variety into another one. And the, so existence of such a uh, really geometrically constructed map is uh, very nice. For example, it gives some jacquet langland type transform, but the, it gives more because now you can deal with some subtle coefficients, question about the, like more L coefficients or more P coefficients. So it's very powerful. So this is one of the uh, motivation. Another one is come from this recent work of Vincent Lafork. So if you start with a global function field, and uh, you can consider, uh, let's say G is a split reductive group over F. Uh, then for every representation, V of the, some n copy of the London stew group, uh, there's a so-called the moduli space of a uh, Dreamfield Stukas. Let me just, who's definite? I, I will not use it. Uh, uh, in fact, in, I, I will mention some local version of this in the talk <coughs> later on. But uh, so net, let me not give the definition here. But it's some moduli space living over certain pow power of the curve. Okay, and uh, uh, of course, its cohomology is somehow related to the studies cohomology is related to the London's correspondence over function field. But uh, somehow, what uh, Vincent Lafork did is. Uh, uh, some new idea of Vincent Lafogue is not just consider the cohomology of 
Stuka by itself, it, he considered all of them, when you range of the representations of the Lang Lang Stu group. So you get this collection of, let's see, some cohomology of, of Stuka's, and then he constructed the Lang Lang's correspondence. So this gives uh, one direction of Lang Lang's correspondence. Some using all of them. Okay, so I, this kind, this work is sort of like a, some kind of some common generalization of these two stories, and maybe some generalized part of it, more general setting. In the so okay, so maybe before to state the theorem, I would like to describe record describe a conjectural shape of the cohomology of Shimura varieties. This kind of, this conjecture in the function field case would follow from the, in fact follows from some uh, result of Winston Laforg as I learned from Dennis. But uh, I think, but anyway, this, this would I think basically explain why our theorem is true, so I think it's, uh, it would be first to explain some, some conjectural description of this uh, cohomology. So uh, we will start from such data, which is uh, what's so-called the Shimura data, which here G is, the re uh, G is like the reductive group over Q. And uh, X is really a conjugacy class of uh, homomorphisms, it's going to be a conjugacy class of uh, homomorphisms from the, uh, this group C star to the, uh, the uh, GR satisfying certain properties, which uh, I, I will not mention in this talk. So this is, we think this is a real, uh, real D group and like in this map. So, but it's a conjugate class, so it's gonna be homogeneous space. So it's GR modulo, the centralizer of one of them, so it's, which is a maximum open compact subgroup. Okay. Okay. Uh, but the, we, we will not use, in fact, we will not quite use this in the talk, but what we wanna use is uh, for such a homomorphism from C star to G, we can com we can complete by it to get a uh, map from. I think this is a real D group, real reductive group, and complete by it. C star, C star to G of C. So in particular, you can I can just take uh, the first. Uh, I get the co-character of G by just taking the first component. So this is a co-character of G, which we know is the same as the, uh, uh, it's an, in fact, uh, this is dependent, it's really a conjugacy class of co-character because it depends on H, which is same as a, a conjugacy class of characters of, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, characters of uh, uh, London's two group, or maybe let me just write it, uh, it's given you a, uh, representation of the London stew group with the highest weights. Uh, okay, this is sort of standard. All right, uh, so I guess uh, uh, <clears throat> now if I fix K, some open compact subgroup, then we can form this uh, usual uh, adelic quotient, which is uh, a double coefficient, <coughs> which a priori is a quasi-projective algebraic variety defined over C, but uh, by some like theory, it's in fact a, a, like, a algebraic variety defined over some number field E, which I uh, well not the so-called the reflex field, which. Uh, whose definition I will not recall here. But let me write it 
to make it this notation the same as function field, let me write it as SHV. Okay. So V is really de determined by X, by this recipe. All right, so, uh, okay, so uh, it's because it's defined over uh, some number field, it's cohomology, let's say compact support cohomology. When you base change to uh, so algebraic closure, it admits two actions. One is the action of the Galois group of the, of the number field, and the Hick algebra. So this is a all right. Okay. On the other hand, we can define uh, some terrible stack. Okay, so let me see. Let's see. We take the coefficient in, lam in lambda, and this lambda could be in some ring like FL or ZL or QL, some, some coefficient. Okay. On the other hand, we can define some horrible stack of. Uh, the so-called stack of London's parameters, which is basically the homomorphisms from this Galois group to uh, the London's do group with coefficient in lambda and the module of the conjugacy by g hat. Okay, so uh, this is a, uh, for any group, the homomorphism from the group to some algebraic group makes sense as a affine scheme and the it takes the quotient as a uh, stack, which is kind of horrible. But anyway, it, it exists. There, but in particular, every representation, we have a functor. But because it's a quotient stack, we have a natural functor from uh, representation of g hat to, let's say, vector bundles. Just let me write it just V to V tilde by this associate construction. Right. Okay, so uh, here's, a, here's a conjecture. Or maybe it may be not very precise, but let's say expected expectation. So if we take the, co so yeah, so right, let me write it. There exists a quasi coherent sheaf maybe in fact a complex of quasi coherent sheaf M on this stack block with the action of the Hick algebra. Such that the cohomology of the Schmura varieties with coefficient in lambda is going to be the cohomology taking the global sections of this sheaf uh, M tensor with uh, this vector bundle. Where these cohomologies are both complex supports. So. Cohomology are complex supports. So let me ignore this issue because this is some expectation. Yeah, maybe. So in fact, maybe you need to take compatibility taking the intersection cohomology. But it's not as important here. So, but the point is, uh, on the right hand side, there's the action of the Hick algebra on the first factor, and the action, some kind of tautological action of the Galois group on the second factor. And uh, you want this isomorphism is equivalent with respect to this structure. It's too big for you to ignore it. It's too technical. But like when you define the stack, do you, how do you treat the continuity condition for the lower representation? This is a good question, but uh, I think one should first, I mean, for this expectation, you can just ignore it. Ignore it but if you want to do precisely, you need to start from finite coefficient. All right, okay. So anyway, so this is the expectation, but the, as I said, in the function field case, this is something like that already really follows from some kind of this thing, follows from uh, 
Laborg's work. What uh, in the number field situation, I think what uh, I add here is really just to separate uh, this into two parts where this shift only depends on the finite Hick algebra. So this is only depends on, see this edge depends only on of AF, okay? In fact, uh, you can describe, if, you, if your coefficient is QL bar or whatever, you can describe this shift conjecturally, give a description in terms of Arthur's multiplicity formula, or Arthur or Cartwright's. The, the only subtle point is usually in Arthur or Cartwright's, the multiplicity is a, you formulate in terms of pi automorphic representation, but the, you can do some adjustment so that uh, it only depends on the pi f, the finite part. So I, I'll ignore this issue here, but uh, I just see this is uh, the observation is uh, it's really the inf infinite part information is uh, observed in this vector bundle, and uh, here is all the finite uh, part. So, so basically the slogan is, uh, I think is uh, just uh, for groups over Q, this infinite uh, GR somehow determines this representation as in the function field situation. All right, so uh, what's, uh, what, what is this uh, expectation or conjecture tells us? It tells us the following uh, corollary, if you admit the conjecture. Suppose I have two group, two groups, G, X, and G prime X. And suppose their finite parts are the same. The only differences are infinite places. In fact, there are many examples of this. Probably later on I'll give some example. Then you, from here, then you would expect there would be homo from this description, just from this dis description, you would expect there would be a homomorphism from this, if you have a map between this uh, two vector bundles as coherent shifts, it would give a map to the homomorphism between the cohomology of the corresponding Shimura varieties. So here I now I ignore, I do not write the tensor over the edge break closure or coefficient, let me ignore that. All right. And it's gonna be some hack equivalent map. So just, just the very, we don't really need to know what is M is. That's very hard. It's like even to determine support is an extremely hard question. But, uh, but just uh, assume the cohomologies of this form, you deduce this. Yeah? So uh, as I somehow, one of the, the work is sort of gave some evidence of uh, this uh, conjecture. And uh, maybe I, before I forget, maybe at the end, maybe if I have time, I'll also mention some trace formula calculation also suggests this such thing should be true. Even you don't know what this Arthur's multiplicity formula, but uh, for different G, you really get the same shift. Okay, so let me now state a purely local theorem. I, I'll eventually get to some statement like that, construct a map, but at the moment, let me state the purely local theorem, which holds in uh, much more, much, much great generalities. So, uh, so now let me assume G is, let's see, over ZP is a reductive group. going to be a purely local statement. So from here, uh, we can define the following moduli space, which is sort of the local version of Shimura varieties or Stukas. So we define the moduli of local Stukas. So uh, this is going to be, with, I'll define it as a whatever, so-called pre-stack or whatever over FP or FP bar, let's see. It's defined as follows. So I take an R point. In fact, I, for technical reason, I need to assume R is perfect degree. 
So its value is going to be the following data. You consider E1 and E0 and E1, which are these are two G tosers on the disk. Let's say disk is a spec VP, PR disk times spec R, which is fan just fancy way to write a spec of a ring of WR, where W is a ring of ve with vectors. And then you consider a uh, modification between them, just the, as usual in the uh, long geometric long and stuff. So, but the modification is at the, the close point. And uh, I identify E1 with a Frobenius twist of, uh, of E0. Okay. So you should, the local version of a uh, uh, Dreamfield Stuckas. Uh, this, this space makes sense. In fact, uh, one can even define, so one can define the category perverse shifts on it. it makes sense. Okay. By some uh, previous, my previous work, and maybe some work of Bart and Schalter. So this makes sense. So of course, uh, I, this maps to the so-called local hex stack. So where you just consider two bundles and modification, but without the identification of, uh, uh, without the identification of E1 with the Frobenius twist of, uh, of E0. Okay. Uh, so at the level, at the level points, this is really just like the loop group modulo, the something like the loop group modulo, the positive loop group modulo, the positive loop, something like that at the level points. So of course the category perverse shifts makes sense here as well, but uh, uh, it's not the, uh, when, to study the theorem. I need uh, one more construction. <coughs> So now I can, now let me define the, ah, right. So if I have a modification of two bundles, I can bound the singularity of this modification. It's given by some, I mean, by some element in this double coset, which is identified with a uh, uh, set of dominant co-characters. So if I bound the uh, type of modification, I get some, Let's see, domain co-character, I get some mu or something like that. So this is going to be a closed up stack. So now let me define the following thing. It's going to, uh, right, let me write it here. I will define sort of the heck correspondence between this uh, two of this module moduli space. This classifies uh, the following. I get one Stuka with the modification of type mu1 and another Stuka with the modification of type, let's see, mu2. And then, you know, a modification between these two bundles in a compatible way. This is beta, and this is top beta. Okay, this is sort of the heck correspondence between. Of course, it emits two maps. Just uh, remember the first, and the remember the second. So, uh, this construction, then we, I can get, uh, using this construction, one can define a category of, um, get the, uh, a category, objects are the same as before, just the category perverse shifts on this stack, on the, on the stack of local Stuckas. But um, I enlarge the morphism. I require the morphism is given by the so-called the homological correspondences. So if I have a shift here and a shift here, I can, I have two maps. I can use the star pullback and the shriek pullback here and the map between them. So this is, a, Usual formalism of a uh, 
the usual formalism of cohomological correspondences. So it takes some time to make everything rigorous, but uh, the category exists. So now here's the theorem. Uh, Maybe, maybe let me just uh, to make a trace. Yeah. Okay. Is, is, is this okay? I mean, the definition. I should I write it down or? So. so it's the definition of what? Word. Of this category. So can you say the word? The objects are. Objects are perverse shifts um, the on the local stukas. Morphisms are given by uh, cohomological correspondences supported. So uh, maybe let me write it down. So objects, perverse shapes. Um, on the stack of local shtukas and the morphism is a harm between two such shifts. Let's see, one is supported on this part is F2 is supported here, then it's going to be the just the homomorphism of F H upper star F1 F H right arrow upper shriek F2. So some kind of uh, usual formalism. And then you can define, of course, and then you, you need to define this category, you need to know how to compose, but the, the composition is given by the usual composition of homological correspondences. So uh, uh, every shift, of course, supported us. Uh, yes. So you might as well. Yes. Suppress. Yes. Yes. And then you take the you know union of all this. All right. Okay. So here's the theorem. It looks a little bit innocent at the beginning, but uh, it, it turns out to give some strong corollaries. So the theorem, is, first of all, let's look at, uh, uh, I will consider the following local version of this stack, local stack. I just consider the uh, stack of an uh, unramified representation of local Galois group. So it's exactly given by element and where the forbiddenness element go. And so it's going to be, the stack is going to be this G check, just given by element in the forbiddenness times this forbiddenness <coughs> modulo uh, G check. So in particular, if the group is split, it's just the uh, conjugacy action of G, G, G hat on G hat. It considers a coherent shift on this uh, stack. I'll put some decoration F, FR, which I'll explain later on. So the theorem is there exists a functor S from this category to the category I just defined. What is uh, satisfying? The property should satisfy is as follows. So first of all, we have this, uh, because we have a map from the stack of local Stuka to the stack of a uh, local hex stack. So in particular, I can pull back of shifts There's a natural pullback. So of course, this is, everything is infinite dimensional, so uh, you need to re normalize the, the normal, normalize it, but the, well, it's, 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 it's well defined. Here I have, uh, I can, this is a quotient, I can map g hat, uh, g hat mod g hat to just b g hat. So I have a coherent shift of b g hat, which is nothing but the category representations of g hat. Okay, and there's uh, this equivalence given by the so-called uh, geometric satake between the representation of g hat and uh, the perverse shifts on the local hex stack. And of course, here you can also pull back of the shifts. 
uh, the claim is there's a functor S such that uh, this diagram is commutative. Here and now, let me explain this. Uh, uh, FR just means uh, it's a full subcategory spanned by images of the pullback. So it's the full subcategory spanned by this kind of uh, vector bundles on the, on the stack. OK, so uh, this is sort of a local statement uh, which eventually will lead to this. Uh, it looks like just the, at the beginning, it's not the, that strong because I didn't, I just said there's a functor. I didn't even characterize what's going to be its image and in what sense it's equivalence or not. But um, anyway, the real, the, the, the whole point is, uh, see, this category and this, they have the same objects, but you, you, you have much more morphisms in this category. And these morphisms, in particular, every, you take the home space, not over here, but uh, let's say over this uh, local version. Any home space would uh, induce a, a cohomological correspondence between sheaves. That's a, that's a statement. So, uh, and of course, the home, if you compose homomorphisms, here you compose cohomological correspondences. So, uh, let me make two remarks, maybe before proceed to the global situation. The first is, uh, of course, as I mentioned very beginning, the, the, the one of the motivations to, to understand this uh, congruence between modular forms, so on and so forth. I think for that, we really need a version of this. For when I replace to, when we replace uh, GO by a uh, Iwahori subgroup. So one prob one probably needs to start with some from some romance theory to. Uh, con instead of consider Stuka's uh, for like hyperspatial level, but uh, some Iwahori level, it's pretty clear what the, I mean, yeah, it, it's not, in fact, it's not clear, sorry, how to make a very precise formulation in the, in the Iwahori situation, but uh, I really would like to know. And in fact, the, the more important thing is that we need the integral version, not not the coefficient must be like ZL coefficient or FL coefficient. That, that would be, really have some u applications. The second remark is I, uh, I hope uh, there's also, should be also a crystalline version of this theorem. In fact, one knows this is a Satake category. In fact, it's a sort of, uh, of motivic nature. So there should be some crystalline version making this theory more powerful, but, uh, but uh, I don't know. OK, so that's uh, uh, just the local version. So let's talk about uh, how to use it. Well, uh, now the, the, the idea is, uh, sigma p is the forbidness. Oh yeah, maybe even in the one, one can I don't know even in the replace the loop group by finite situation, finite dimensional algebraic groups. There's some there should be some some form something which I don't know how to. Which would you know in, involve this uh, the linguistic representations? I, I don't know how to formulate it. Okay, so uh, let's consider the the now if you have this the global version is modulo some something which I will not explain, but it it will be easy to construct the map. So now if I start with uh, G X, a global data, so I get uh, some. Some Shimura varieties, which, in fact, uh, uh, will, it, in in many cases, not, uh, it's not known in general. So that's a limitation of what we can do so far. But uh, in many cases, 
It's going to be the moduli space of certain abelian varieties with uh, with abelian varieties with additional structures, something like that. So like uh, this be a polarized abelian varieties. And uh, some, these are some additional structure which I let me ignore. Okay. But uh, uh, over the <coughs> over the finite, you can always map. Uh, let let me yes let me uh, base change to finite. Field actually even algebraic closure. So this is going to be such moduli space. Then you can just map this data. Just forget the whole abelian variety. Just remember it's so called the p divisible group with certain additional data. Then, by some classical Donet theory, such data is really nothing but uh, but some like the local Stuka with, uh, let's see, uh, with a modification bound by mu. This mu is this uh, uh, co-character I start with very beginning. So the representation of g hat is just a uh, field mu. OK. So now uh, the, the situation is now Almost uh, so. The idea is, uh, I can pull back the whole local story to the to the global story. So let me just now fix erase this. So suppose now, suppose I have G one and the G two. Okay, two Shimura data. Such as the, their finite parts are the same. In fact, you need to to make this work. You really need to do something slightly stronger. So, first of all, if their their finite plates are the same, these two groups must be inner form of each other. The the Galois group X the same on the Dinkin diagram. But you need something slightly stronger. You need them to be pure inner form. Okay. Anyway, so in particular, this would imply the two groups are the same. Ah, yeah. And the, let me assume this uh, P is a prime such that uh, unramified prime. So in particular, you get uh, some. Uh, uh, integral model of these two reductive groups over ZP, they're isomorphic. So then, using this procedure, you can just uh, map your, there's a natural map from the module of uh, Shimura varieties for the first Shimura data to the stack of local Stukas. Uh, I have something here, similarly. Note that this makes sense because these two groups are the same at the, or the finite place at the place at P. And the, there's something to prove, not quite trivial, but uh, one can show that uh, in many cases you can just uh, pull back the, the correspondence downstairs to make uh, uh, correspondence upstairs, and such that two diagrams both are Cartesian. So that's the point. If you think about it, this is a, something like uh, downstairs the module of sh local Stukas are like some some uh, the, the name module of the abelian variety. So you have homomorphic map. This is like some something like uh, this space is classifying the homomorphism between the other name modules. And then you want to lift it to some quasi isogenous between abelian varieties. So it's kind of Tate's theorem. Uh, Anyway, such thing exists in many situations. So, uh, uh, let me see. 
you can make, and the, then this whole diagram would be com, uh, would be compatible with the action of the prime two p Hick algebra. Okay. So okay, so now. <coughs> We get to the. We can formulate the, the following theorem. So is this? So this is the FP bar point. Yes, this is F, FP over FP bar. Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you. Let me just uh, mention. If you think about it, this two Schmerber classified abelian varieties of different Mumford plate group over generic fiber. So there's in fact over the generic fiber, there's no way to make a quasi-isogeny between two abelian varieties with different Mumford tate group. But somehow, when you pass two characters P, this, uh, some re uh, the restriction at the, the Hodge theoretical restriction uh, disappears, and so you can really make such correspondence. So it's some kind of uh, exort, you know, it's kind of surprising there's a, oh, in characteristic P, there, there's a way to relate Different, even heck, 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 equivalently really different uh, uh, Shimura varieties. Okay, but anyway, from once you have such thing, then there's general machinery, right? So now, if I start from this v1, I can, and the v2, two representations, I can consider, uh, right. I just erased this uh, diagram, but uh, right. So okay. So now, recall this local theorem, sorry, I, which I just uh, erased. But in, anyway, that would give give us a homomorphism from this to uh, the homomorphism in in this category of per perverse shifts on the category on the local Stuka, but with the uh, homomorphism given by correspondences, the Sataki shift, pi one, pi, sorry. Okay, so in fact, in this case, uh, uh, V1 and V2 are just two minuscule representations of uh, G hat. These shifts are really just some constant shift support on some uh, some closed strata. But uh, let me, but still, let me mention to construct this, you still need to use the whole category, not just the minuscule ones. Uh, now, for the by the general formalism of cohomological correspondence, now you can pull back. So this would give us a homomorphism. Which is already equivalent with respect to the prime two p Hick algebra of the constant shift. Let's see QL bar on um, on the first one. Okay, up to you know this because you start from perverse shift. There's the usual. Shifts and the tape twists, the constant shift. And because, sorry, this is a homomorphism, but uh, this is, sorry, it's not homomorphism, it's a correspondences. And the support of the correspondences will be here. Yeah? But the, if you have a cohomological correspondence, uh, there's this fiber, in fact, these two maps are improper. So, the, in fact, the fibers are some uh, F and then lustic varieties. So, there's a general formula, and such cohomological correspondence gives you a really map of cohomology. This is the general formula of, uh, of the. Uh, <coughs> Cohomological correspondence, which is uh, with respect to the prime two p Hick algebra. So that's uh, basically that's a uh, part of theorem, and of course, theorem is given g x one, g x two. 
which satisfy certain properties. For example, the first properties are the same as finite place. The second is you really want this data uh, so far gives the modular space of Abelian varieties. Otherwise, we, we don't know how to relate to the global geometry to local geometry without knowing scope uh, Abelian varieties. So we get such map, but we get more, right? Because uh, it's not just a map. It also respect to the composition. If you have G1, G2, G3, here I can compose. And uh, here I can also compose. So compatible with composition. Com compatible with compositions. <coughs> G1, X, G2, X, G3, X. So, uh, so that's sort of the basic, basic theorem. There are two situations that are particularly interesting. The first situation, which is already interesting, is G1 is the same as G2. Really, they are literally the same. Okay. situations. Let me very briefly mention the first situation is the uh, these two data are the literally equal. So but so in particular the corresponding representation of the do group are equal. So what you get you get from here an action of the endomorphism algebra of this vector bundle on the cohomology. Ah, yes, sorry. Here is, yes, I write it correctly. It's a cohomology with compact support. Yeah, so you get, uh, you literally get, uh, you get the uh, action with some algebra. What is this algebra? Inside here, of course, the ring of regular functions contains the ring of regular functions. We call V tilde is a, is a, is a vector bundle on this stack, so it contains the ring of regular functions. Okay, so it acts on here. And uh, on the other hand, we, we know there's a, a spherical Hick algebra at P will, will act on the cohomology. And uh, also there's uh, this classical Sataki isomorphism. So of course you hope this diagram is commutative, uh, which unfortunately cannot be I cannot prove it uh, in general. So the con conjecture is this diagram is commutative. Uh, in, I think, well, in function field situation, in fact, Vincent Laforgue already con considered this action here. And he proved such thing really is true. This is one of, one of his, uh, uh, main technical result, so-called S equals T theorem. Which is, but uh, unfortunately, in the, in the number field case, since you can't move points, there are some, this, to prove such thing is much more difficult. We don't know how to prove it. Except what we know is uh, the conjecture is true when the Shimura's uh, data is a set. So, I mean, when this GR is compact modular center. So in this case, this representation V is gonna be a one-dimensional representation. So everything is discrete, one can prove it. But anyway, that, uh, but even just this proposition plus this uh, compatibility, you already get uh, to see this map is, is non, it's a non-zero map, okay? So, and in fact, you see this map, uh, if I denote this ring by J, this map is in fact uh, uh, also J equivalent. Okay, so uh, this is 
the first situation is when they're the same. The, the second situation is, uh, oh, by the way, let me, maybe I moved before moving to the si second situation. Let me say a little bit more about uh, uh, this ring. You, you may ask, what is this? Uh, what is this ring? Well, it uh, it contains this uh, ring of regular functions, and also it contains one element, at least one element, namely, there's a tautological action of this vector bundle, namely, at the fiber over over a group element, uh, it, uh, this group element act on this uh, representation by that element. So, in particular, there's going to be a map. Uh, let's see, there's a tautological action, in particular element. It's going to be a map from this ring to it. And then there's some relation, it's, it's uh, some natural killer Hamilton relation. You can, can check. And uh, it turns out, it turns out if, uh, if, if P is at the split prime, this is really an isomorphism. This is inject, injective in general, but this is the isomorphism if P is split. But, uh, but in general, this is going to be some non commutative algebra here which is some, something, I think it's interesting, but uh, maybe it hasn't been start, studied uh, a lot. I don't know. Maybe, maybe some expert could tell me whether this ring has been studied or, or not. I mean, it's really just the purely representation theoretical thing. It's, yeah, it's just involves the representation of finite, finite dimensional representation of the Langlands do group. So it's, a, it's, a, it's some interesting object. Another situation I would consider is the case two is uh, uh, okay, this is the case one. It's uh, let's see, just uh, G one R, the real point is compact modular center. So in this case, uh, the corresponding Schmerbert is going to be a set, just uh, what I mentioned at the very beginning. So I can rewrite this map as follows. Then the cohomology of the corresponding Schmerbert, now it's, it's just the functions on this uh, uh, finite double co this double coset, which is finite set. And now I can rewrite this theorem as a map of uh, this tensoring over homomorphisms from V1 tilde to V2 tilde over this ring J. Okay, now, you know, this ring J would act on here by the usual Hick correspondence because of this proposition. It would map to the cohomology. Robert. And then this, this, this is, this is uh, in fact, it would map to into the middle dimensional cohomology. Okay, this is, some, one can show that. And then, okay, so here's the theorem. So, part one. All right. Okay. Uh, so this map. Let me do it by star. One star is uh, is given by cycle classes, cycle class maps.
for some middle dimensional algebraic cycles in the more P fiber of the Schumer variety for B2. Okay, so if you think about it, if you think about it, it's not surprising because the, the construction uses this correspondence. So it's really given by algebraic cycles, this, uh, this, ma this map. The second is, uh, you want to say something more about this cycle class map, this map. So, and uh, of course this map is going to be a Hick equivalent. It's equivalent with respect to the prime P Hick algebra, the map star. So I can talk about the, uh, so let pi f be a Hick module. So now I can talk about it, it's, uh, its isotypic component. Then the pi f isotypic component. of the map is injective if the Satake parameter of at P is sort it satisfies certain generic condition respect to V two. Okay. Uh, I will, uh, yes, so let me, there's third part is, in this case it's very special for, for certain, let me just say for certain Shimura varieties, because I, I don't have time to define what class I consider for certain Shimura varieties. the pi f isotypic component of star is, is subjective to the cycle class, to the k classes space of t classes. If the, if the parameter is, uh, is uh, so of course need to be generic. The Satake parameter. It's so called strongly generic. Okay, so uh, my time is almost, uh, I think I'm one minute left. So let me explain the, uh, the proof in, in two sentences. For part three, for this is kind of restriction of this kind of Shimura varieties, we can co compare the trace formula, which as I mentioned at the very beginning, the, this trace formula, uh, Comparison would uh, suggest the shift I mentioned at the beginning really depends on the finite part of the group. It's not uh, dependent on the infinite part. Uh, for the interesting part is part two, but if you think about it, if I want to prove something like the cycle class map is injective, what I need to do, I need to calculate the intersection matrix of these algebraic cycles. But now, because of this formalism, the intersection matrix. of the cycles are, are encoded into this purely representation theoretical pairing. But as I said, if this is a Shimura set, this is one dimensional, so this is a, uh, uh, just j. So I get uh, over this g ma g, I have two vector bundles. These are, do, do, this, the pairing turns out to be not perfect over the entire locus. It's going to be perfect over, away from certain 
discriminant locus, so that's where this generic condition comes from. But uh, I should say, I don't know how to really calculate the inter intersection matrix. It's kind of, what I can do is calculate the, the determinant of it. But if you want to do really calculate the intersection matrix, probably you need to, you know, you need some nice, first get some nice spaces here. And uh, there's some way to, for example, produce spaces in this, uh, in this uh, uh, J modules. Oh, by the way, these are like finite, finite projective modules over J. One can show it. Uh, but uh, I think it's, uh, it's still, I don't know how to calculate the, each entry of the intersection matrix. So that's it. Yes. Yes. The theorem I erased. Yes. It was from the same those blackboard reform. Yes. There's the only assumption is, uh, of course, you need the prime p is uh, the level at p is uh, uh, hyper special. And no, no, no. No, no, that's, what is what's the conclusion? What's the property of the map? There's a map. It compo It uh, it's compatible with compositions. That's it. And in the special case, it's given by the, you know, there's some suffering acting on the, by the usual action of the Hick algebra. Oh, the special case of identity, for example, that one goes to one. Yes, of course. Okay. Please. I'm puzzled by why you're looking at cohomology of complex support. The, the, the history of the subject is that people move to intersection cohomology instead of the. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, the reason I use cohomology with compact support, there, First of all, it, it works because it's homological correspondence. It, it could work for if you have a, like, a proper morphism. For intersection homology, you know, the map from the global, if you compatify your Shimura variety, the map to local Stuka, if you use, if you use, use toroidal to, to compatification, maybe that's okay, but if you use, uh, inter, inter, if you use uh, minimal compatification, it's not going to be the smooth morphism. So the, the machinery of pullback of a cohomology correspondence has some problem. So you, you need to pass to some toroidal compatification, which probably could work, but uh, I didn't uh, really think it carefully. Okay. So it's a category, perverse sheaf, correspondence, and those two are triangulated category. It's a bidding category. I just consider perverse sheaves. No, maybe it's not even a binning category. It's, it's just because I consider correspondence. It, it, it's just some category. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> the, the whole point is you can compose morphisms. 